It is 8 p.m. and here are the top stories we're covering. The fentanyl crisis growing in Colorado. We're a little behind the curve on it. But as state lawmakers push for harsher punishment for possession, efforts to prevent deadly overdoses are lagging. So to have just another tool in our tool belts um, to be able to save someone is so crucial. Now, after months of back orders, Denver's now ready to supply a potential lifesaver to thousands. We teach CPR to kids. Um, why aren't we giving naloxone to people as another tool to save life? Wheat Ridge officers rushed to help one of their own after being stabbed by a suspect. If uh, his fellow officers hadn't stepped in, there was a high likelihood that he would have died. As the war in Ukraine continues, refugees are faced with another fight, survivor's guilt. The only thing I was thinking about is like, uh, what's next? Am I going to see uh, my mom? Am I going to see my friends? And how can I help while not being there? Plus, a small group of Coloradans working to help get medical supplies to Ukraine, but they need your help getting them there. We have to work. We have to do something. We have to help them. Good evening and thank you for watching Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Jacqueline Allen. I'm Danny New. Today, Colorado lawmakers finished refining a bill meant to combat the rapid rise in fentanyl deaths in our state, which includes an amendment that would make possessing a gram or more of fentanyl a felony. The decision came after a 14-hour session lasting until 3 a.m. this morning in which doctors, defense attorneys, and addiction experts spoke in opposition of this policy. While the state focuses on strengthening punishments for the possession of the deadly synthetic drug, cities and counties are stressing harm reduction methods, mainly naloxone. That's a medication that reverses opioid overdose doses as the antidote to the opioid epidemic. And soon more than 4,000 people in Denver will finally get their orders of naloxone. The city of Denver had publicized its program to send out free naloxone kits in February of this year, and the response was so overwhelming, it depleted the supply, and it led to about two months of back orders. Denver 7's Rob Harris shares the strain on the city supply and the potential lives that could be saved. We did not have that supply on hand because we had never pushed out that much before. It was a good problem in a sense, according to the Denver Department of Public Health and Environment. So many people wanted to carry naloxone that their systems were completely overwhelmed. There was a whole lot of media attention about it. So we ended up getting uh, 4,500 orders in uh, less than two months at this point. Around 4,500 orders in February and March, compared to just 500 in the five months prior. The combination of that surge in demand and distribution issues from suppliers led to months of backlog and requests going unfulfilled. Now, DDPHE says they found a new supplier and have received a shipment of about 3,000 kits. They're honoring requests in the order they came in and they hope to keep getting regular shipments to keep up with the demand. So folks will start receiving their things. We're really excited about that. We are so thrilled that everyone wants to carry Narcan and learn how to check their drugs and make sure that people in their communities are safe. Increased attention caused the spike in requests for naloxone in February, but the need has been growing over the past decade. According to the Colorado Department of Public Health, 1,477 people died from drug overdose in Colorado in 2020, up from 1,072 in 2019, and up from 653 in 2010. That's a 126% increase over the course of the decade. Those numbers represent real lives lost, but advocates say the numbers would be even higher if it weren't for this life-saving substance of naloxone. Tonight at 10 o'clock on Denver 7, we're going to hear the real-life story from a mental health advocate here in Denver was able to witness an overdose, deploy naloxone, and reverse it, potentially saving a life. Back to you. Thank you, Rob. And to add more context to just how severe fentanyl's impact has been on Colorado, CDPAT reports at least 900 people died from fentanyl overdoses in the last year, which is roughly half of all drug overdoses in 2021. A woman in Greeley has been arrested after her husband died of a suspected fentanyl overdose. Last month, the 33-year-old husband was found unresponsive by his wife here, Amy Con Conradson. He later died, and when Weld County deputies later searched the couple's home, they found 160 counterfeit pills containing fentanyl and heroin. Conradson is now facing distribution charges. A nearly 20-year veteran of Wheat Ridge's police department is in recovery after being stabbed multiple times during a traffic stop last night. Around 1 a.m., officers were called for a report of a suspicious U-Haul that had hit a fence at the Prospect RV Park. We Ridge police say that 
two police officers approached the driver, and that is when Officer Alan Fisher was stabbed. His partner was able to take the suspect into custody, you can see there, and then help provide medical care to Fisher until paramedics arrived. And meanwhile, for people staying at this RV park, this is a terrifying incident. To know when your person goes out every night, someone you care about, and then to hear this news, it must be terrible. It's awful, so I'm so glad to hear he's doing well. The suspect is 29 years old, and he has been charged with attempted murder and first-degree assault. And in Fort Morgan, police are looking for this man, a 42-year-old Carlos Aleman. They believe he may be involved in an investigation to the exploitation of children. Police say they learned of Aleman during a sexual assault investigation, and that despite saying that he would turn himself in, Aleman has not yet. New York City police have arrested the man accused of shooting 10 people at a subway station in Brooklyn yesterday. Now, all of those victims are expected to survive. The 62-year-old suspect called police on himself and led officers to his location. Today, police also confirmed that he bought the gun used in the shooting legally from a firearms dealer after passing a background check. They say he was driving a van before the attack, seen here in this video posted to his YouTube account. I am driving, I am driving, I am driving because I started my trip early. In a series of videos posted before the shooting, the gunman said he, quote, wanted to kill people and that there needs to be, quote, more mass shootings. He's now facing multiple terror-related charges and could be sentenced to life in prison. Today, President Biden authorized an additional $800 million in weapons for Ukraine. Pentagon says the new assistance package is tailored to the wider assault they expect Russia to launch in the eastern portion of the country. And that's reflective of the kind of fighting that uh, that the Ukrainians are expecting to uh, to be faced uh, with here in this a uh, little bit more confined geographic area. They specifically asked uh, for fire support and that and specifically asked for artillery support. Now this is the seventh security package the U.S. has allocated for Ukraine bringing the total to $2.6 billion in aid since Russia's invasion began. Meanwhile, today, Russia claimed 1,000 Ukrainian troops have surrendered in the Ukrainian city of Mariupol, but the city's mayor says Ukrainian troops are still fighting. As we've reported, Ukraine's president says 10,000 have already died in the city. The president has also doubled down on the claim that Vladimir Putin is committing genocide in the country. The situation changes day by day, and one Highlands Ranch woman says that her mother narrowly escaped. Denver 7's CB Cotton joins us now to explain the month-long journey this woman took. CB? Jacqueline, that's right. Today we spoke with Oksana Davgan. She's originally from Ukraine, but in her early 20s, she decided to start exploring the world, and the United States was on her list. Now she lives full-time with her husband and three daughters in Highlands Ranch, and the latest addition to her household, her mother, all the way from Ukraine. These photos show Davgan's journey through Eastern Europe as she traveled to get her mother from the Ukrainian city of Chernihiv. First, Davgan met her mother in Warsaw, Poland, and that's where things got tricky. Davgan says, unfortunately, her mother was denied a visa for the states, so they had to travel to Mexico. In Mexico, her mother was able to get humanitarian parole, and then they returned here to Colorado. The entire journey lasted a month, and the pair returned exactly a week ago today. If my mom is ready to leave her home and ready to pack it in one backpack, I felt that, okay, now my turn, I'm, now it's just action time for me to arrange it for her because of her age and because of how dangerous it was there. At least I was trying to see what can I do, you know, whom do I know that I could contact. Yeah, I'm very thankful for people around us. It's, uh, it's nice to have such a great, you know, support and, uh, and kind people. And while Oksana Davgan is so grateful to be here in Colorado, she and her mother wish they could do more to bring everyone in need to a safe place. Coming up on Denver 7 News at 10, we'll hear more from her and all the steps she had to take to bring her mother here to Colorado. In the newsroom, I'm CB Cotton for Denver 7 News. Amazing story. Thank you, CB. A group of Colorado military veterans are delivering supplies to Ukraine, and they plan to drop them off in person. Members of Operation Sunflower Railroad will fly to Poland and then cross the border with medical equipment. For the past few weeks, they have been working with the group Ukrainians of Colorado to collect supplies. And on top of that, several fire departments are chipping in, even donating an ambulance. 
uh, fire authority decided to donate also ambulance. And realistically, we thought the ambulance was going to be kind of a pipe dream until she until she showed up. That is amazing. If you want to help, you can donate on the DenverChannel.com slash gives. Then in the drop down menu, select help get medical supplies to Ukraine. Coming up on Denver 7 News at 8, whether you ride a bus, train, or plane, you'll have to mask up for just a little longer. And how a teen in Golden became a national chess master after his fourth brain surgery. They had to learn how to walk, how to talk, um, how to speak. Now this state champion is becoming an advocate for people with disabilities. It's okay to, to be different, but still have the same level of competition. Plus, a breath of fresh air. When you can enjoy Colorado's national parks for free. Those winds are still pretty wild, but there are calmer days and warmer days ahead.